you notice that this does a complete 180 as it spins. You might wonder if it's due to some imbalance related to its axis of rotation, air pressure, fluid dynamics, or even something tied to gravity and Newton's laws of motion. Discovered by cosmonaut Vladimir Johnnybekov in 1985 during a space mission, this surprising phenomenon highlighted an important aspect of rotational dynamics. Specifically, when an object's principal axes differ, torque, angular momentum, and rotational inertia interact in complex ways. Torque causes the object to experience rotational force. Angular momentum tries to maintain the rotation direction. But when the object's mass is unevenly distributed or its shape is irregular, rotational inertia leads to instability, causing sudden flips. Planets like Earth, however, remain stable due to their large mass and even distribution of that mass, which allows them to maintain a steady rotation governed by Newton's laws of motion and gravitational forces. The Genebekov effect occurs when the axis of rotation differs slightly from the object's second principal axis, and neither air resistance nor gravity are required for this phenomenon. In principle, planets act more like gyroscopes, with their mass distribution allowing them to process significant rotational inertia that resists sudden changes or disruptions. This stability is only altered by an impact from an object of similar mass. So while a single comet cannot significantly alter a planet's rotational axis, a collision with a moon-sized object could. The Johnny Bekov effect, though fascinating on a cosmic scale, can actually be observed with simple, everyday objects. One classic example is the tennis racket theorem. If you take a tennis racket and try to spin it in the air around different axes, you'll notice that spinning it around the longest or shortest axes results in smooth, stable rotations. However, if you spin it around its intermediate axis, the second principal axis, the racket will flip unexpectedly during the rotation, just like in the Zanibikov effect. You can try this yourself with any irregularly shaped object, such as a book or even a wrench. The unpredictable flip occurs due to the object's uneven distribution of mass and its moment of inertia, and it can help demonstrate how rotational dynamics play out in real time. The mathematics behind this effect is rooted in Euler's equations for rigid body rotation, which describe how angular velocity changes in time for an object with different moments of inertia along its three principal axes. These equations can be simplified using the angular momentum L, the angular velocity omega, and the moments of inertia I1, I2, and I3. For an object rotating about its intermediate axis, small perturbations lead to instability, described by the following relation. L equals I omega. Here, when the angular velocity aligns with the second principal axis, any small deviation causes a complex redistribution of angular momentum. The system becomes dynamically unstable, leading to the sudden flip. The magnitude of these flips can be modeled using differential equations, with terms that account for the object's shape, mass, and the forces acting on it. This instability shows why objects like wrenches, books, or spacecraft with uneven mass distributions can experience surprising rotational behavior, behavior that is predictable once the math is understood but may look chaotic without that deeper understanding. Um, I'm going to be done with a table tennis racket, but all I have is a frying pan. So did you know if you flip a frying pan up like this, it will always land the opposite way around? Um, that's because there's three axes running through it. It's the interesting part that I know nobody cares about. Uh, two of them are balanced and one of them is unbalanced, so it always flips. Let's give it a try. So it's facing up, facing down, facing up. There you go. There's my fun fact. Give it a try with a ping pong bat or a frying pan. Apparently it works with that. Um, yeah, have a good day. Oh, look at that foot in the air. Tennis racket theorem. Tennis racket theorem, look it up. So if I flip this, it turns 180 degrees. So 
So the main axis is here, and there is an axis through here, or there is an axis here. So if you flip it like this, just come to me now. And if you flip it like this, it's all normal. So if you flip it along this axis, it does a 180. Three of these would produce the same effect. Clearly, if I flip this, I'll break it. This one, wait, if you flip it like this, it turns. This one does liquid in it and it's an imbalance in the weight. So if you see if I flip it, it will turn. See it turns in the air. But if you hold it like this, but if you set it like this and the axis, the axis is here, it turns. So as you see the label facing up, facing down. If you give us crew and data, we got the loads for you. Delta H is looks good now. Roger, Delta H is looking good to us. Roger, Eagle, Roger, how does it look? Eagle has wings. Roger. Looking good. Roger, Neil, we got a. If you give us crew and data, we got the loads for you. Delta H looks good now. Roger, Delta H is looking good to us. 